Well, hello there! Kumusta po kayo? How are you? And thanks for tuning in to another edition of Paul de Guzman Presents Art. So today, we have ventured out to the city of Burnaby, which is actually uh, home to the ancestral territories of the, let's see now, the Henkemenem and Squamish First Nations. And um, here in Burnaby, there is a uh, art gallery called the Burnaby Art Gallery, which is a, a converted mansion called the Seaperly Mansion. And it's a really beautiful Edwardian structure. And so we're going to go inside and have a look at the work of local artist Kelly Lycan, who did a site-specific installation in the gallery. So we're going to go and see some freestanding sculptures, some wall-mounted uh, pieces, as well as some site-specific interventions into the, um, into the gallery. So I hope you enjoy the tour, and here we go. Okay, so we're just about to enter the Burnaby Art Gallery here in the city of Burnaby and we're just going to go through the front doors. So there's two levels to this show because the gallery actually has two levels and we're going to go through the first level here and have a look at the work of Kelly Lycan, The Fireplace. So on we go. So as is customary with my uh, videos, I'm going to go and do a pan of the show. And while I'm doing the pan, I'm going to go and read from the informative um, little handout that they give out in the front. So make sure you, you, um, you get a copy of um, this handout because it's got a really nice um, little essay there that kind of um, introduces Kelly's work. It's going to go over here for a little bit. And here, I'm going to go and read the first paragraphs of the uh, brochure. So Kelly Lycan is a photo-based installation artist. She investigates how objects and images are placed and displayed in the world and the, and the resulting cycle of value they experience. With a long-standing inquiry of repurposed and recontextualized interiors, objects and materials, her exhibition, The Fireplace, looks at a host of occupants. In the once residential space of the Bur Burnaby Art Gallery, meditating between the world of objects and the absence of its former residence. So the mansion was actually built around 1911. And it was actually the home of the Seeperleys. Let's just have a look at my notes here. So the Seeperleys, Henry and Grace Seeperley, this was called the Fair Acres Mansion in 1911. And um, I think they bought it because it was at one point, a, um, there was a strawberry farm here, so they bought the place. And it was actually a large, huge sensation at the time, architecturally. 1911, this is now a, uh, an uh, Edwardian style, I would say. And you can see a lot of the, um, the really interesting details of this house. Now, the thing about it is that we're just going to go into the turret room right now, where there's a freestanding sculpture by Kelly. I don't know if you can see that, but I hope you can. But we're going to go inside a little bit. And... Um, See inside, you're going to see a little bit of like sculptures or even figurines of birds because we're going to go and have a look outside because this is a really beautiful vantage point. Probably a room where you can actually just sit and have tea and look at the wildlife outside. So I think a lot of this work, this freestanding work anyways that I'm showing you right now tend to sort of like deal with that sort of essence of bird watching or just dealing with nature. And you're going to see a lot of these elements around the installation, these sort of like mylar or sort of like um, film screens that are kind of translucent. And I want to sort of touch up on that a little bit later as I give you some information about this installation. And we're just going to go and focus on another work over here. There's a lot of these um, photographs, as you can see, inside, and I was informed just now we're going to go into a room a little bit later with a lot of photographs, like bins and bins of them. 
And um, I was told that um, it was actually acquired as one of the inventories of one of the prop houses in Vancouver and Burnaby because apparently Burnaby is a city that has all of the, um, the film prop houses because Vancouver is actually known as the um, Hollywood North. So we have a lot of film industry people coming in here doing their like movies and their TV series. So there's a lot of like props to be sort of like had everywhere. And so you see a lot of these translucent sort of like um, vestiges of perhaps Art Nouveau, Art Deco, even Edwardian style sort of like decor that seems to me to be kind of like peeling off the walls. And um, you know when you have a um, uh, century old or more than that house, you know, you, during the times that there are a lot of occupants here, a lot of things are actually put into disarray for a period of time until uh, until such time that it actually gets uh, converted into something more permanent and then you have like custodians who actually take care of everything. The thing about it is that when Henry and Grace Seeperly occupy this, Grace actually died quite early. She died in 1917. So they occupied this place in 1911. And she died in 1917 at the age of 54. And there was a specification that if Henry, her husband, you see, the thing about it is that the, um, the house was actually bought with the proceeds of Grace's money. So when she passed away, she told her husband in the will that if he were to sell the house to use the proceeds to build a, chil a children's playground in uh, Vancouver Stanley Park. That eventually happened because when the home was sold in 1922, so the proceeds were actually sort of like sent off and it was actually made to sort of um, create that playground in Vancouver, in the Stanley Park. During that time that it was sold, there were a bunch of um, iterations to the household. And um, there was at one point, the house was actually used as um, a tuberculosis ward for the Vancouver General Hospital. And after that, it was actually occupied by monks from the Order of St. Benedict. And then after that, there was a cult who came in called the Temple of Mere Abundant Life, which was actually led by a shady character who was later arrested for bigamy, assault, and extortion. And the thing about it is that the children of the cult um, were actually punished if they weren't actually adhering to the teachings of the cult. And so it's, it's kind of like counter to what Grace Seeperly had in mind in terms of, I think she was a very caring person and she wanted to sort of use her wealth for the betterment of children. And so that entire sense about it is, um, is something that was actually counter to what she believed in. And then after a stint, we're just going to go into the other room. I'm going to pause the history lesson for a little bit, and we're going to pause into the, we're going to go into this room where there are bins and bins and totes and totes of, of, um, of ephemera, which are, I think they're, they're all photographs, right? They're all photographs. And you're actually sort of like, you can go in and sort of like just go through the photographs. And um, I'm not sure if Kelly actually went through each and every bin, but remember when I mentioned the, uh, the prop house um, companies that actually operate here in Vancouver and in Burnaby? It's because of the uh, film industry that's actually quite prevalent here in the, um, in the lower mainland of Vancouver. So this was actually acquired through them, um, perhaps maybe on loan, and they're all kind of like, classified in terms of like what they're depicting. This one has telephones and plants. This one has mirrors. And it's really quite beautiful to sort of like have this sort of like sense of tactility with regard to this sort of like installation. Like you have, a, you have the room in, on the other side that has sort of like more of, a, um, of, a, of an element of design and uh, stage setting because uh, Kelly, uh, was actually involved in set design at one point in her career. Um, and I'm just going to read a bit about Kelly's um, um, little reference here. Um, Lycan's works reference past furniture, 
decorations and styles that have passed through the house along with its people, offering new glimpses of the gallery home through re reconfiguration and drawing on her long history as a set decorator. So this entire show called The Fireplace is sort of like an homage to a lot of the histories that have happened in a, in a home. Because the thing about a home is that a home is like any other object. It will have an independent life. Like the independent life of objects, we can't really control that. But as human beings and also as a, an architectural structure, this will, of course, live through many lifetimes. And what I feel about this entire installation of Kelly's is that she's trying to conjure a lot of the past lives or the, a lot of the past sort of like experiences that this house has undergone. And so we get back to this article that I read recently about ghostly apparitions in the house. Apparently, some people have seen the ghost of former resident Grace Seeperly walking the corridors or walking air in, in certain areas. And to me, when I look at all of these sort of like um, installations that sprawl away, especially when, remember I mentioned the sort of like translucency of certain objects here, like for example, the mylar or even the films, uh, what, do you, what do they call, what, what did she call them? Did she call them the, um, the film, the film gels, that's it. it. There was actually something referred to as a film gel, and a lot of these materials have this translucency to it. And it's very much like the translucency of what we may consider as ectoplasmic discharge from ghostly apparitions. You know, I mean, if you had gone through and seen, let's say, movies like the Ghostbusters or something like that, you will be familiar with what ectoplasm is. It's this sort of like gooey substance that oozes out of things. And that apparently is one of the characteristics of, of, um, of a ghostly apparition, is that you have these things, like for example here, you may sort of like look at them as stains of ectoplasmic discharge or even just stains from like the former sort of like objects that occupied um, a lot of these walls. You ever sort of like have like a picture hanging on the wall for about 10 or 15 years and then, and then you suddenly remove that picture and then you have this sort of like stain like around the picture that almost seems to me like what it's quoting here. It's almost like a, um, an apparition or, like, or an evidence of existence that was there at one point. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go around and have a look at the second floor. And we're going to go up the stairs and have a look at the other interventions. And while we're doing that, you may as well just admire a lot of the architectural details of this house, like for example, these stained glass features and the banister as well. So the second floor is a smaller room, but it's also equally, equally dense with a lot of objects. And I'm just gonna pan through it because we have a few things that are actually on the walls that are actually, um, they're framed. They have sort of like the essence of the work that we saw downstairs. You know, they did uh, all these sort of like film gels and mylar, things that are sort of like of a translucent quality. I quite like these pieces. There's a certain sort of like sense of, of, um, of quoting a history. And also, I just noticed that the, um, the plastic is wrapped around over the, uh, the frames of these. So these are sort of like more formalized pieces that tend to sort of like echo the entire mood for the installation. And I'm just gonna go and have a look more. These look like mold stains, but at the same time, they actually are almost embroidered bits of fabric, you know? And then there's also this translucent quality that sort of like alludes to sort of like um, the transparency that goats have 
you know, because I think a lot of that is being channeled into the show, into the entire essence of ghostly apparitions, ectoplasm, sort of like different types of histories. And we're just gonna go through here. Just close up on that. And there's another piece over there, which I find very, very beautiful because it almost has this sort of like Middle Eastern Moroccan sort of like Art Nouveau style to it. Because I think there's also an investigation of different types of styles, you know? Like during the Edwardian period around 1910, you know, there's a fascination for a lot of things. You know, they're discovering Japan, they discovered China. There's a lot of like Middle Eastern Moroccan influences, like with, especially with things like William and Mor William Morris, you know, those types of decorative flourishes. And then we're just gonna go over here into this installation. And the main part or portion, I would say, of this installation is that thing that was stamped right there. Just going to go and have a look at it closely. It says a highly important auction of the Seaperly Fair Acres Burnaby Lake contents. The late um, Henry T. Seaperly. So I guess that's like around the 1920s, I would say. And then we're just going over there and having a look at some other things that were actually installed, which I, I think is kind of like more projecting into like the current iteration of residence here. Because like when you look at this foil swan, you know, that's something kind of like dealing with uh, like getting some takeout or something like that from a restaurant, you know, a little takeaway. So that's more recent. And um, we look just opposite of it is this sort of like really large sculpture of a necklace. And um, we're just gonna go in a little bit closer and you can see that a lot of the materials that she uses are what might be called poor material, poor materials, Arte Povera, even sort of like a, um, a sense of uh, the, the economy of means with regard to um, a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, materials that are being used and then sort of like refashioning them into something more luxe because when you look at this from from afar and you don't know what it's made of there's a certain luxe quality to it because it tends to sort of like allude to the fact that this is a mansion it's a mansion of uh, great proportion and it probably was actually sort of like um, cost a lot of money to actually go and, and, um, and maintain this place. And incidentally, they actually kept this door open and I'm assuming that it's also part of the installation. But it's actually, there's really nothing in here in terms of like an intervention by Kelly with, re, with re, but just regarding sort of like opening up sort of like a sense of the original sort of like layout for the mansion so that you can actually sort of experience the grandeur that this mansion had at one point. I mean, this is one of those minor sort of like rooms. I think it's almost like a little dirty kitchen or something like that, or maybe some sort of place where they would actually clean game or something like that. But um, it's a really beautiful little sort of like space especially when you look at all the, all the tiling that sort of, uh, has a sensibility of like Moroccan or even sort of like Spanish tiling. And we're just gonna go to the uh, corridor in the, I'm just gonna go do a little bit of a pan of this space. And, um, and we're just gonna head, turn right over here because there's another piece here that you can see, which is one of the last pieces in the show. I may have missed some, but I just wanted to sort of like um, point this out, almost like an old aquarium of some sort. Maybe something was kind of living in there, but it's, um, it's obviously something that was um, filled with water and then the water evaporated and you have, you have that semblance of of, 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 of evaporation and whatever happened to it. It's almost like a, um, it's almost like some sort of like lizard was living in it maybe, I don't know. 
And then we're going to pull this out. And then you have also all sorts of things from the prop house, a lot of uh, photographs of old, um, old seating, but there's also some sort of like um, smaller, uh, smaller sculptures there. And um, there's a diversity of interpretations for this show. And the thing about it is that it's more a matter for you to sort of like discover certain elements of this show and trying to sort of like think about what you feel about it. Like my entire take about regarding this show has really more to do with sort of like the history of it and how histories tend to sort of like inform us, how materials can actually inform us of like the, um, the independent life of objects. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into this room and we're gonna end on that note. And I hope you enjoyed that tour of Kelly Lycan's show at the Burnaby Art Gallery called The Fireplace. And if you enjoy that video, that's great. Please uh, click the like button. Also, you can uh, share this on social media channels if you wish. And you can subscribe to the channel, channel for further uh, news of uh, some upcoming videos. I post weekly, so that's, uh, that's something to look forward to. And in true Paul de Guzman fashion, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much for your engagement today. And I hope you enjoyed this tour. And as always, I hope our art informs your life, and I hope you have a great day.